My son has cancer. And he's not yet six months old. And that's not fair. We found a lump in his foot about two months ago, so when he was about two months old. And Maybe it was even three months ago. He might have just been a month old at the time. And we went and got it checked out, and then checked out again, and then checked out again. And finally we did a biopsy and found out that it actually is a tumor. Malignant. We don't know exactly what kind yet. Um, so now my four and a half month old is going to be experiencing chemotherapy. And all the joys that come with that. And there is a non-zero chance that I'm going to lose him. We've taken some time with our parents, with our families, to kind of rest and recuperate a little. We're waiting on more information as we talk with specialists. I am deeply grateful for modern medicine, uh, not just for the titanium rod in my leg and the fact that it saved my other son's life, when he was nine months old, but now for this, and for competent doctors, people who really know what they're doing and, and care. What I want to make this video about is the problem of evil. There is a, a philosophical problem directed against, um, well, it's a problem in religious philosophy you know, how can there be a God if, if, the, if there's a contradiction between these four premises? One, God is, uh, has good intentions. He wants good things for his children. He wants evil to not exist. Uh, he has good intentions. Two, he has the capacity, he has enough power to make evil go away, to make pain go away, to make the bad stuff disappear and he uh, knows about the bad stuff, so he's omniscient. If he knows everything, then he knows about the bad stuff. If he's all-powerful, he can get rid of the bad stuff, and if he has a good will, then he wants to get rid of the bad stuff. So goes the argument. And yet, evil exists. Therefore, one of those three premises needs to go bye-bye. Either he doesn't know about the evil, or he can't stop the evil, or he doesn't want to. And And for me, um, you know, that this theoretical question of whether or not God exists is not relevant to me in the slightest because I have had experiences which I cannot deny. In the words of Joseph Smith, an American prophet, the, I knew it and I knew that God knew it and I could not deny it. I've had experiences that I cannot deny, even if I wanted to. Um, so I know for sure that God exists. And I know that he's aware of me. So the omniscience thing, boom, I, I accept that premise. Okay, so that means I need to dispense with one of the other two. Or other three. Either evil doesn't exist, clearly it does. Pain exists, suffering exists, bad things exist. And wouldn't, wouldn't a kind God want to get rid of that? And wouldn't he be able to? You can make the problem of evil disappear really quickly on an intellectual level just by buying a couple of additional premises. One is to say that, well, death isn't really that bad and pain isn't really that bad because both are temporary and we are immortal beings. If you dilute this pain in the long term, then clearly it's not so bad. And if it's necessary to learn something or whatever, then, then sure, it's worth it in the long run. And as much sense as that makes intellectually, it is so incredibly unsatisfying in the moment. Because stuff hurts. 
and pain is real. Uh, Jordan Peterson t thinks that pain is the fundamental reality. Rene Descartes thought it was, I think, therefore I am. And he said, no, no. No matter what you say about how theoretical sense experience is, the second you're in pain, you believe it. <sighs> so, you know, I had a, I've had a couple of very angry talks with, with God, with Heavenly Father, in the last couple of days. And I am grateful for the experiences that I have had, like the time that I broke both of my legs and had to learn how to walk again while living in my parents' basement trying to support my family and being unemployed. That sucked. But it's the reason I got into law school. And it's the reason I was able to pay for law school. And it altered my character and my perception of pain and my perception of choice a lot. I am... And then I was talking with my father-in-law the other day and he's in a wheelchair with a, a medical condition which is going to continue getting worse and worse and worse and destroying his nerves until he dies. And there is no hope of respite from it. There is no... There's nothing you can do except for to slow it down. And it's the slow ticking time bomb coming after him. First the legs, then the arms. Taking away his vitality. Ex-military, six foot four mountain of a man slowly being reduced to a wheelchair. And that, that sucks. But he, uh, you know, he and I were talking and I asked him, so how, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with this problem of evil, this problem of pain? as C.S. Lewis called it, because, strictly speaking, we're not talking about evil, unless we're talking about, you know, choices. Choices can be evil. Things can be... <sighs> Unpleasant isn't quite strong enough a word. They can be painful. <sighs> and he, he, his argument is this, that humans are here to choose and that agency or the ability to choose is innate, you can choose, but the, um, the capacity to choose even when you're in pain, to rise up out of it, to be kind even though you're hurting, well, that only goes up to a certain pain threshold. And so he talks about pain as something that is building your capacity for empathy and for uh, a kind of moral courage. This idea that pain uh, or painful experiences grow you in a way that you can't get otherwise or won't get otherwise or whatever is interesting. Um, I, there are a lot of different flavors of pain. There's the pain of injustice. There's the pain of having screwed up. I mean, if you make a mistake and you suffer because of the mistake, then you can blame yourself and that hurts. It's another, another layer of pain. Um, when it's completely unprovoked and unfair, that's a different kind. And, and this one, you know, the comfort I take and, and have to take in this is uh, from, from my faith. I believe that my son is uh, tied to my family eternally and that he will always be my son no matter what, even if he dies, even if I die, even if we both die. And I believe I, that he, his body can die, but that, that's not him. That's not fundamentally what he is. What he is continues. And I believe in a resurrection so that he will get a body again, thanks in my faith to Jesus Christ. And that is comforting as well. So, you know, I'm taking comfort. I actually am taking comfort in the moment from that idea of, you know, the long game. That as bad as this is, it isn't permanent. And that which isn't permanent can be endured. Victor Frankl said a man can endure, um, maybe he was quoting Nietzsche. A man can endure almost anything as long as he has a why to live, something like that. I don't know how helpful this is going to be for my little boy. I mean, I don't know how much of this he'll be able to understand. I mean, he's so innocent. <sighs> but I have hopes um, that we'll be able to catch it, that the chemo will work, that he's going to survive, that this is all going to turn out well. Um, and I love seeing how happy he is constantly. He's by far the happiest child I've had, that my wife and I have had. Um, 
just happy, gurgly, bubbly, open, innocent face. So I have hope that this is going to turn out well, and even if it doesn't, there's the long game. And for my own sake, and for my wife's sake, as, as this affects us, you know, no matter how it turns out, we're going to be um, more resilient and uh, possibly more empathetic and different than we were before. I'd like to do a video in the future about something Joseph Fisher said to me, which is that experience is something that you can't sum up as a lesson. Real experiences are. And I, I want to go into more detail with that and talk about my motorcycle accident. That, that's something that I'll probably do later. But for now, um, I'm grappling with the problem of pain. What some people call the problem of, of evil. And and pain is real. It hurts. Bad things happen to good people for no reason. And, um, or for no apparent reason. I can't say for no reason entirely. If you accept the idea that there's education in this, take kind of a Taoist approach. Say, all experience is, is just is. And what you gain from it and the way that you interact with it, that, that counts. God bless you. Pray for us. And we'll see you next time.